Unit 2, Developing Problem-Based and Project-Based Instructional Plans. So let's start with nature of problem-based and project-based approaches. What is a project-based learning? It is an individual or group activity that goes in over a period of time, resulting in a product, presentation, or performance. It typically has a timeline and milestones and other aspects of formative evaluation as a project proceeds. It is similar to process writing. So in process writing, there are six steps. First is brainstorming. So you're sharing of ideas and opinions. Organizing the brainstorm ideas. This is collecting the ideas and try to organize it to make it more systematic. Developing a draft. By developing a draft, it helps you to visualize it. Obtaining a feedback. By obtaining a feedback, it helps to determine what needs to be improved. Then revising, which may involve going back to earlier steps if you see something wrong. Then lastly is publishing. Once everything is good and complete, that's the time that you need to publish it. Project-based learning is learner-centered, so it means that the student has a freedom to choose what content area or the nature of the project that they need that are planning to do. Why is it important and how they will be assessed because students are the one who sets a goal for their project. So this learner-centered characteristics of PBL or project-based learning contribute to learner motivation and active engagement since students are the one who choose and plan for the project. From student point of view, project-based learning is a learner-centered and intrinsically motivating. You do it because it's enjoyable and interesting, rather than because as an outside incentive or pressure to do it. Students are included in the development of the assessment and have full understanding of the assessment. They learn to assess their own work encourages collaboration and cooperative learning because it's a group work so you need to help each other and as a group you need to have a common goal for you to achieve it students learn to assess the work of their peers they learn to provide constructive feedback to themselves and to their peers require students to produce product presentation or performance that becomes a component of a student's portfolio. Information technology may be used as one of the vehicles or components in the product, presentation, or performance. Allow students to make incremental and continual improvement in their product, presentation, or performance. This will help improve your project. A project is viewed as a process rather than as a product. There is a strong parallel of process-based writing and project-based learning. One of the keys to good in writing is revise, revise, revise. As work on the project proceeds, the project itself and the work that needs to be done is under continual review and may undergo substantial changes. So is this sign? so that students are actively engaged in doing things rather than in learning about something. The average classroom noise level is much higher than in a traditional classroom because students often work in groups with conversations, movement, sharing, and helping each other being the norm. So it's challenging, focusing on higher order skills. So there is a focus on higher order skills, including problem solving, becoming an independent researcher, setting one's own goals, and self-monitoring, or we call it self-assessment. From teacher point of view, project-based learning has authentic end purpose. The content for the subject trends, uh, tends to be complex and authentic. You mean real world or similar to problem and task that adults address. Many projects focus on specific current problem, such as environmental or social problem. 
The purpose of, of the project is to help solve the problem. Such problems are complex and do not have simple solution. Uses authentic assessment. The overall assessment for students' work is authentic. Authentic assessment is sometimes called performance assessment, and it may include assessment of a student portfolio. In authentic assessment, students are expected to solve challenging problems and accomplish challenging tasks. So a, ta a student's product, presentation, or performance often becomes part of the student's portfolio. Teacher facilitated. The teacher acts as a facilitator and mentor, providing resources and to advise students as they pursue their investigations. However, the students collect and analyze the information, make discoveries, and report their results. The teacher is not the primary delivery system of information. Has explicit educational goals. The project is designed to facilitate learning. It is designed to help achieve the overall goals of education. It includes a focus on specific educational goals, often cutting across several disciplines. It's rooted in constructivism. The design of the curriculum, instruction and assessment is rooted in constructivism. Constructivism is a theory about knowledge and learning based on the idea that individual learners construct their own knowledge building on their current knowledge. It's designed so that the teacher will be a learner. The teacher is also a learner. The teacher and the students learn together and the teacher role models being a lifelong learner. The teacher allocates time and to reflect on his or her learning. Teacher plays a major role in setting the learning goals of the project and teacher and student provide formative evaluation so when we when we say formative evaluation that is sometimes referred to and as an internal it is a method for judging the worth of a program while the program activities are forming or we call it in progress Teachers, students, and others may help in summative or final evaluation. So there should be collaboration in doing it. Then, rubrics created by a combination of teachers and students. So this facilitates self-evaluation, peer evaluation, evaluation by the teacher, evaluation by the outside experts. So again, they need to collaborate in creating the rubrics. The fourth one is, from a research point of view, project-based learning is supported by work in constructivism. First is situated learning theory. Situated learning theory holds that effective education requires learning that is embedded in authentic context of practice, wherein students engage in increasingly more complex tasks within social communities. When we say motivational theory, it is tasked with discovering what drives individuals to work towards a goal or outcome. Most motivational theories differentiate between intrinsic and extrinsic factors. Inquiry and discovery-based learning. So discovery learning is a technique of inquiry-based learning and is considered as constructivist based approach to education discovery learning can occur when they when the student is not provided with an exact answer but rather than the materials in order to find the answer themselves cooperative learning so it is a process of breaking a classroom of students into small groups so they can discover a new concept together and help each other learn individual and call a collaborative problem solving the capacity of an individual to effectively engage in a process whereby two or more agents attempts to solve a problem by sharing 
the understanding and effort required to come to a solution and pooling their knowledge, skills, and effort to reach that solution. Peer instruction. It is a structured teaching practice that requires students to examine their own and their classmates' reaction to an analysis of the content, so it's a simple yet effective way to engage students. And lastly is problem-based learning. So let's move on to problem-based learning, or we call it PBL. So it is a teaching method in which complex real-world problems are used as a vehicle to promote student learning of concepts and principles as opposed to direct presentation of facts and concepts. Any subject or any subject area can be adopted to PBL with a little creativity, while the core problems will vary among disciplines. The problem must motivate students to seek out a deeper understanding of concepts because they're the one who will work on it. The problem should require students to make recent decisions and to defend them. Students should be able to know how to come up with a good judgment and to know how to defend it. The problem should incorporate the content objectives in such a way as to connect it to previous courses or knowledge. So it should be related. If used for a group project, the problem needs a level of complexity to ensure that the students must work together to solve it. So the five basic elements of cooperative learning should be applied. More complex problems will challenge students to go beyond. So if used for a multi-stage project, the initial steps of the problem should be open-ended and engaging to draw students into the problem. So, to, so this is to make it more organized and systematic. So the problems can come from a variety of sources like newspapers, magazines, journals, books, textbooks, and televisions or movies. Some are in such form that they can be used with a little editing. However, other needs to be rewritten to be used. The following guidelines from the power of problem-based learning. First is choose an essential idea, concept, or principle that is always taught in a given courses or course, and then think of a typical end of chapter problem, assignment, or homework that is usually assigned to students to help them learn that concept. So this is list or list the learning objectives that students should meet when they work through the problem. Second is think of a real-world context for the concept under consideration. Develop a storytelling aspect to an end of chapter problem or research an actual case that can be adopted, adding some motivation for students to solve the problem. So look at magazines, newspapers, and articles for ideas on the storyline. Some PBL practitioners talk to professionals in the field searching for ideas of realistic applications of the concepts being taught. Then, the problem needs to be introduced in stages so that students will be able to identify learning issues that will lead them to research the target concepts. So the following are some questions that may help guide this process. What will the first page or stage look like? What open-ended question can be asked? What learning issues will be identified? How will the problem be structured? How long will be the problem be? Or how many class periods will it take to complete? Will students be given information in subsequent pages as they work through the problem? What resources will the students need? and what end product will the students produce at the completion of the problem. So the fourth is, write a teacher's guide detailing the instructional plans on using the problem in the course. 
So if the course is a medium to large size class, a combination of mini lectures, whole class discussion, and a small group work with regular reporting may be necessary. The teacher's guide can indicate plans or options for cycling through the pages of a problem, uh, interpersing the various modes of learning. The final step is to identify key resources for students. Students need to learn to identify and utilize learning resources on their own, but it can be helpful if the instructor indicates a few good sources to get them started. Many students will want to limit their research to the internet, so it will be important to guide them toward the library as well. So the method of distributing a PBL problem falls under three closely related teaching techniques. We have case studies, role plays, and simulations. Case studies are presented to students in written form. Role plays have students improvise scenes based on character descriptions given. Today, simulations often involve computer-based programs. Regardless of the technique is used, the heart of the method remains the same, the real-world problem. Both problem-based learning and project-based learning are types of experiential learning. Problem-based learning involves critical thinking to examine problems that lack a well-defined answer. In project-based learning, students are challenged to develop a plan and create a product or artifact that addresses the problem. Now let's proceed to project-based multimedia learning. So what is project-based multimedia learning? It is an extension of a tried and proven teaching practice of project-based learning. It extends this exact same concept by making the end product a multimedia or computer-based presentation. Students might make a website or a PowerPoint presentation which includes irrelevant sounds, narrations, and images. A group of students might write a script, screenplay, act, shoot, and edit a video which relates to the project requirements. They might create an ebook that covers a subject matter studied in class to present to a younger class at school. When you produce a multimedia product, it engages students who normally tune out and the work they do to tends to be more complex. Furthermore, sharing their final product with their peers, parents, and others instills pride. And the most important aspect is the presentations will include evidence that students have mastered concepts or process that teacher needs to teach. We have core curriculum, real world connection, extended time frame, student decision making, collaboration, assessment, and technology. What teacher promotes and develop when they apply project-based multimedia learning? So we have planning and organization skills, research and technical skills, synthesis and analysis of complex content and data, how to present information in compelling ways, and understanding of how academic subject matter applies to the real world. Because the students will be motivated Teachers have the freedom to support individual students that require additional support. One of the most advantages by produ products of project-based multimedia learning is peer tutoring. Teacher cannot be the class experts in all computer applications, but your students will readily put up their hands to help out. You develop a team of photo experts, sound experts, website experts, PowerPoint experts, camera experts, scanner experts, and video editing experts. They dutifully assist other students with their continually developing skills and ultimately, they help the teacher manage the whole gamut of multimedia projects. The absolute amazement of their parents is another great byproduct. 
So less is using technology to enhance students' inquiry. It is important to acknowledge that students are already interested and engaged in using technology. This creates many amazing opportunities for schools and teachers to benefit from integrating some forms of technology in the classroom and to make teaching and learning more effective. Use of mobile technology for inquiry-based learning. Students are using mobile technology for learning more than ever before to extend that it is now forms a critical part of their academic success. Mobile technologies offer rich and diverse media applications that let users integrate photos, videos, text, and provide real-time recording and analysis tools that can be used anywhere and anytime. Inquiry-based learning is a type of learning approach in which learners get in touch with authentic situations to explore and solve problems. Learners explore, investigate and observe, and become more involved in social interactions and higher level thinking. Mobile learning environments provide a, a plethora of possibilities for inquiry-based learning. The handheld wireless mobile devices extend the learning experience to outside the classroom and also enhance the thinking abilities of the learners. By using them, learners can record information, organize ideas, assess, interact, and collaborate with peers. While on field trips, students can use their mobile devices to explore the place, gather information, and take notes. They can record their observation and take pictures quickly. With internet access, they can search for even more information. There are various ways in the mobile technology that can help inquiry-based learning. Within one device, students can do multiple tasks like conduct research, record interviews, gather data, take notes, document events, collaborate with peers, creative multimedia projects, and share their work. Mobile devices can be used to gather rich data in the form of text, audio, image, video, and more. They can support real-time interaction for real-time communication and feedback of learners with their instructors and the larger community. Students' interest is maintained and engagement is increased which is much required to perform authentic investigation and research to support inquiry-based learning. Students can use multiple data capture methods with annotated photos, GPS coordinates, and to gather and analyze data thoroughly. Mobile device technology reduces the amount of time and work that required in data entry, in research, and it also improves quality of learning experience. Having some personal devices makes students responsible for their own learning by designing their research projects, from developing the question and method to data collection and analysis to presenting their research. Students can access relevant digital res uh, resources such as identification guides, weather records and maps, and specific apps like Twitter, Skype, and a lot of more for communication. Students can have continuous access to research groups to connect with greater scientific community. There are various apps available on mobile devices which facilitates inquiry-based learning. These apps can be used by educators and students by designing inquiry questions, ident identifying problems, planning projects, integrating assessment, assisting with the management and location of research materials, creating multiple uh, multimedia projects and connecting with an audience. Some such apps are for inquiry process of tuning in by watching, questioning, thinking, observing, and reading. So you have to use Safari, YouTube, and BrainPop. For supporting student as a problem solver, critical thinker, collaborator, communicator, and creator, you use Lino, Podcasts, and Evernote. For collecting, creating, searching, gathering, 
identifying a topic and connecting with others, use Skype, Google Art, Digo, and Twitter. First, synthesizing information by interpreting, comparing, reviewing, sorting, or formulating and analyzing. Use Sketch, Socrative, Dropbox, Calendar, and Google Drive. Overall, using mobile technology to support inquiry-based learning has a positive impact on student engagement. This technology can facilitate the research project significantly enabling additional opportunities for data collection, communication, and troubleshooting. It allows students to have more customized learning pace and process and receive individual attention and learning guidance. It helps students with low learning achievements to perform better, as now they learn by doing and seeing instead of memorizing.